I'm looking at a class that uh, has 26 signed, 13th ranked right now. And I, I'm going to bring up two uh, situations that I came across today. One was that Clemson had uh, got an in-state prospect that was out there at running back uh, that they were able to get today. And then there was another situation where I saw there was a battle between Clemson and South Carolina for an in-state offensive lineman. So uh, that's a 2024 guy. Oh, 24 guy. Blake, um, I'm, I'm never thinking about that. Blake yeah, Frank we, or yeah, we don't need to from do 2024. Oh, okay. That was, they ruined yeah. my lead in for you. Regardless, what stands out to you today and what's happened over the last few days? Um, the biggest thing that stands out to me about Clemson's class is they've kind of – it was built in the trenches. You know, Clemson signed six defensive linemen today. That's the most they've signed since 2015 when they signed seven. Um, and these are really good players. Um, Peter Woods, Vic Burley – Phylon Green, three elite level defensive tackles. Um, Woods and Burley, you know, top 50 or so players overall. So well, we're talking about fringe five star guys. And even the ends, while they're not quite highly as rated as the tackles, um, Tom Ryan Parker, David Ojebi, and AJ Hoffler, I, I think Clemson got three really good pass rushing prospects. Hoffler and OJB might need a year or so in the system to acclimate. I think Parker could probably contribute right away if needed. But but I think Clemson really kind of restocked along that defensive line in this class. And with some of the guys it looks like might be leaving, particularly at end, even though Dabo Sweeney hinted today that there were going to be some guys coming back that weren't expected to be back. But, you know, it was a class where they needed to hit on some guys along the defensive front, and I think they did that. And even in the offensive line, I thought Thomas Austin killed it. His first recruiting class as offensive line coach, um, Zachariah Owens, Harris Sewell, who was a top 100 guy, and Ian Reed, Ian Reed three four-star guys, um, all – capable of making impacts sooner than later. I think Sewell's a guy who who could come in and maybe contribute for a spot on the two deep as a freshman. Got Jason Priester here from allclemson.com on SI. Join him right there. You see it on the banner, allclemson.com. And, uh, of course, a lot on National Signing Day and uh, the bowl game coming up against uh, Tennessee. Uh particular positions that were targeted for this class? Um, outside of the defensive line, uh, you know, Clemson needed to – well, wanted to get a quarterback next in line to Cade Klubnick. I think they did that with Chris Vizina. He, he's one of the better quarterback prospects in the country, probably one of the five best quarterback prospects in the country in my opinion. But – um a guy who who really has all the tools. He's got the arm. He's got pinpoint accuracy. He, he throws a beautiful deep ball. I think he's not quite as polished coming out of high school as Klubnik was. Might need a year in the system. We'll have to see where he is when he gets here. But he's early and rolly. And and Clemson, you know, losing DJ and Billy Wiles to, to the transfer portal really needed to shore up the depth in that quarterback room and I think they addressed that with Vizina. They got a graduate transfer out of the portal, portal in Paul Tyson. You know, he, he's been at Alabama and Arizona State, um, could come in and compete for the backup job if Vizina isn't quite ready to be that guy yet. So I think they shored up quarterback. And I like the receivers they took in this class. They're not going to jump off the screen at you when you look at their recruiting rankings. Um, but Noble Johnson and, and – Tyler Brown, I think, are two fairly underrated guys in this class. I watched Noble Johnson work out at Debra Sweeney's high school camp last summer, and, and that's where he earned his offer. He, he was the best wide receiver I watched work out over those few days. He, he is built like a freight train. I mean, he is just put together. 
He runs very precise routes for a kid coming out of high school, has excellent hands, very explosive first step, gets in and out of his breaks really quickly. And Tyler Brown's a local kid out of Green out of Greenville. Smaller guy, but extremely explosive, long range speed, and, and very twitchy. Something that I think Clemson's kind of lacked in that receiver room in recent seasons. And then there's Ronan Hannafin from up in Massachusetts. Doesn't get talked about a lot. Uh, a four-star guy by 24-7 and rivals. Um, Sports Illustrated ranks him as inside their top 100 guys. And they rank him strictly as a wide receiver, not as an athlete. And he's a big-bodied guy, six foot two, two and a half, probably pushing 210 pounds already, going to play on the outside. I think that is a name that Clemson fans will become acclimated with sooner rather than later. I think he can make an impact on this team in the next year or two. Besides Paul Tyson in the uh, transfer portal, you know, Dabo's got this reputation of not wanting to dabble into the transfer portal. Do, do we see them looking for immediate help there? I think that's going to depend on who these guys are that, come, that are coming back. Um, it would not surprise me at all to see Clemson go and try to land a veteran wide receiver to add to that room. They're not just going to take any guy. It'll have to be the right guy. They'll be very picky about it. That's where they're going to be with their approach to the portal for any position. Um, and depending what shakes out at, at defensive end, if they can get a couple of these guys back, like there's some talk to Xavier Thomas might come back. I think Justin Maskell might be back. Those are two guys that were thought to probably be gone coming into the season. But if they can get those two guys back, maybe they don't need to go to the portal to get it in. But if you lose both those guys, that changes things drastically. And Clemson's extremely thin at end if you lose both those guys because K.J. Henry's leaving too. Miles Murphy's gone. And what they will have at end will be very inexperienced hardly any real playing time whatsoever outside of Greg Williams, who doesn't have much himself. So, so if all those guys leave, I think end is a position they can look at. But if you get a couple of those guys back, maybe you don't need to go to the portal for an end 